I want us to begin to magnify God. He's a God that hears and answers prayers. Let's exalt him. Let's adore him. Lift up your voice. The Bible says in, in, in the book of Psalm 89, it says, with my mouth, verse 2, it says, with my mouth, I will make known the faithfulness of God. Our God has been faithful. Our God and our King, we have come together again to lift your name on high, to exalt you, O God, the living God, the true God, the one who was, who is, and who is to come, the Almighty, the one who cannot be shifted, who cannot be questioned, who cannot be changed. Father, we have come to worship and to adore you. Blessed be the King of kings. Blessed be the Lord of lords. Blessed be the great God of Israel. Blessed be our living God, the one who never fails. Father, we exalt you. Be thou exalted, faithful Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Psalm 72, verse 18. Psalm 72, verse 18. We want to thank the Almighty God for how he, was, he showed us his faithfulness. The Bible says in Psalm 72, verse 18, Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who only does wondrous things. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who only does wondrous things. I want us to lift up our voices together in thanksgiving to God and say, Father, praise God. Let's say, Father, we praise you for all the wonderful things you have done in our midst in 2020 and for the many testimonies of turnaround and breakthroughs. They call the glory in the name of Jesus. Let's lift up our voices and begin to thank God for all the wonderful things. It's only him. He's the only one that does wondrous things. Father, we thank you for all your wonderful works in our midst. We thank you for all the breakthroughs. Lord, for all the testimonies, testimonies of exemption, testimonies of open doors, testimonies of making ways, oh Lord, where there was no way. Lord, we have come to honor you. We say thank you, faithful Father. You have done us well since the beginning of the year, Lord. We have recorded testimonies. We have recorded your te the, the breakthroughs, oh Lord, amongst us. We have seen your hand in our midst. We have seen your move, O oh God, and we give you all the glory. Thank you, faithful Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Psalm 126 verses 1 to 3. Psalm 126 verses 1 to 3. The Bible says, when the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And we are glad. Are you glad? Are you glad? Then let's lift up our voices and say, Father, thank you for releasing the captives. Thank you for filling our mouth with laughter. And our tongue with singing. Thank you for the great things you have done. At prayer conference 2020. Thank you for making us glad. Let's lift up our voices and begin to thank God. If you are grateful to God, let God hear your voice. Let's thank him for the healings, for the deliverances, for his word, for the captives that were set free. God filled your mouth with laughter. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the great things, O oh Lord, you did in our midst over the weekend. Thank you for your great move. Thank you for your great walk in our midst, Lord. We return all thanks to you. We return all praise to you, O oh God. We appreciate you, faithful Father, for all that our eyes could see, all that our eyes could not see. Lord, we appreciate you, Lord. You have been faithful to us. You have heard our prayers and you have answered. Lord, we give you glory and praise. Be thou exalted, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let's open to the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. Now, based on all the promises and the prophecies that we received, Paul said to Timothy, you should war with it until it comes into manifestation. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12, Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I will lessen my word to perform it. And in Ecclesiastes 3.14, it says, I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. 
Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it so that men should fear him. Let's lift up our voices and say, Father, concerning all your awesome works and promises at this conference, please hasten your word to perform it. Let all the miracles be forever. Nothing added, nothing removed, that men may fear before you in the name of Jesus. Let's lift up our voices and pray, Father. Hasten your word to perform it. You have loosened bonds of the enemy. Lord, hasten your word to perform it. You have established the destinies of your children. Hasten your word to perform it. You have terminated stagnation. Lord, hasten your word to perform it. You have placed your children on a flight. Lord, hasten your word to perform it. You have terminated storms. You brought peace where there was storm. Lord, hasten your word to perform it in the name of Jesus and every healing every deliverance, everything you have done, Lord, we declare there shall be nothing added, there shall be nothing taken away from it in the name of Jesus. These great things will manifest and men will see and fear you, Lord, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Lastly, we'll be praying for the workers and members of Jesus' house story from Malachi chapter 3, verses 17 to 18. Malachi 3, 17 to 18. The Bible says, they will be my people, says the Lord of heaven armies, on the day when I act in judgment, and they will be my own special treasure. I will spare them as a father spares an obedient child. Then you will again see the difference between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who serve God not. We are going to pray and say, Father, according to your word, have compassion on your children. And spare them from this deadly plague in the land. Once again, distinguish between those that serve you and those who serve you not. Let's begin to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, according to your word, have compassion on your children and spare them as many as are your children in this land. Lord, spare them as you said in your word, in the name of Jesus, let there be a distinction between those that serve you and those that serve you not. Spare your children, Lord, from the deadly plague in the land, in the mighty name of Jesus, spare your children, O Lord. Spare them, O Lord. Let there be a clear difference to the glory of your name. Father, we give you praise. For we know you have heard, you have answered. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Please have your seat. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Shortly be standing to pray from 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and heal their land. Hallelujah. Let's be on our feet to pray. I want us to pray with understanding. If my people will humble themselves, there are three things. You must humble yourself. You must turn from your evil ways and you will pray. We want to call for mercy. We we'll pray in this order. Father, Father come, in come in humility to ask for mercy. Please forgive our land. On faith for our land for persistence on faithfulness. And heal our land by mercy in Jesus' name. So say, Lord, have mercy and heal our land in the name of Jesus. Lord, have mercy and heal our land in the name of Jesus. Lord, have mercy and heal our land in the name of Jesus. Lord, have mercy and heal our land in the name of Jesus. Lord, have mercy and heal our land in the name of Jesus. Lord, have mercy and heal our land in the name of Jesus. Lord, have mercy and heal our land. In the name of Jesus, Lord, have mercy and heal our land. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. We are going to pray that prayer better. When we are talking about mercy, some people think it's only for those that have seen. It's not like that. You see, mercy is, is a mystery that can turn the heart of God. It doesn't mean whether you're a sinner or not. 
So I'm going to call for mercy upon Jesus' house story, upon Scotland, upon Aberdeen, upon the United Kingdom. So let's cry, Lord, have mercy on this land in the name of Jesus. Lord, have mercy on this land in the name of Jesus. Have mercy upon us, Lord, according to thy loving kindness in the name of Jesus, according to the multitude of thy tender mercy. Lord, have mercy upon us in this land in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Second, we are going to pray from Psalms 91 verse 3. Psalms 91 verse 3. It says, Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Some people are wicked and they are still wicked. Hallelujah. So I'm going to pray, Lord, deliver us in this order. Father, for the sake of your children in the land, please deliver United Kingdom from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence in the name of Jesus. Lord, deliver us from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence in the name of Jesus. Deliver us from wicked trap, trap of darkness in the name of Jesus. Lord, deliver us in this land in the name of Jesus. Lord, deliver us in this land in the name of Jesus. Father, deliver us in this land in the name of Jesus. Lord, deliver us from the snare of the fowler in the name of Jesus and from the noisome pestilence, the snare of the wicked in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, deliver us. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, wonderful Father. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. We want to pray for today's service. Our prayer will be taken from Hosea chapter 12, verse 13. Hosea chapter 12, verse 13. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, he was preserved. Hallelujah. And by a prophet, he was preserved. I want us to pray with understanding. You see, upon every territory, there is a saint man. And if you can't discern the grace upon that servant, you may not be blessed by him or by her. So some people can be in church and they've not been blessed. Why? Because they've not discerned the grace upon the saint man. Hallelujah. So I want us to pray with this understanding. Say, Father, Father. every participant of the service out of anything and everything representing Egypt and by your servants tonight, let our land, Jesus' house story, and all her members be preserved in this season in Jesus' name. Let's pray from that understanding in the name of Jesus, Lord, through your servants, in the name of Jesus, for every participant, Lord, take everything and everything that is representing Egypt in the land of Jesus' house story and to all her members in the name of Jesus. Lord, preserve us in this season. Preserve us, Lord, in this season in the name of Jesus. Lord, preserve us in this season in the name of Jesus. We call Father in the name of Jesus. Preserve us in this season. In the name of Jesus, Lord, preserve us in this season. In the name of Jesus, through your servant, in the name of Jesus, through the servant, the apostle of this church, in the name of Jesus. Father, preserve us in the name of Jesus. Preserve this land, the land of Jesus' house story, in the name of Jesus. Preserve this land, preserve this land. Preserve this land in the name of Jesus. Preserve this land in the name of Jesus. Preserve this land. Reske pandash inta kando sobrendesh bareske tush bantas kendo sobrente kapa in the name of Jesus. Preserve this land. 
Preserve this land, Jesus' house story. In the name of Jesus, preserve this land. Even through the servant, the apostle of this church. In the name of Jesus, even through your servant, the apostle of this church. Preserve every member in the name of Jesus. Preserve every member in the name of Jesus. Deliver us from everything representing Egypt, representing bondage in the name of Jesus. Representing slavery, representing servitude in the name of Jesus. Lord, deliver us, Father, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Now we want to pray for ourselves. And I want you to pray for yourself with the whole of your heart. Because I believe you love yourself. We're going to take in a reference from Luke chapter 11 and verses 9 to 10. Luke chapter 11, verses 9 to 10. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. And he who seeks find. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. I believe we just finished the prayer conference. And that was a key point I know that struck the heart of everybody. They say when you pray a prayer twice, it means you didn't believe the, the first one. So we are going to pray with the heart of understanding, with det determination that as I knock the door, the door will be open. As I seek, I will find. Hallelujah. We are going to pray in this order. For everyone who asks, receive. And he who seeks, find. And to him who knocks, be open. Whatever you want to ask God for, upon this altar, ask with the whole of your heart. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, visit me in a dimension that the world will know that I am blessed. In the name of Jesus, Lord, make me an eternal excellency, a joy to many generations. In the name of Jesus, Lord, make me a voice to my world. In the name of Jesus, let my life be pleasing unto you, Father. In the name of Jesus, let my life be pleasing unto you. In the name of Jesus, I want to represent the kingdom. In the name of Jesus, I want to represent the kingdom. In the name of Jesus, the Lord visited Solomon and his life changed. Lord, visit me in a dimension that my life will change. In the name of Jesus, whatsoever that the Lord represents your glory in me, Father, take it away. In the name of Jesus, Father, take it away. In the name of Jesus, Father, take it away in the name of Jesus. Thank you, wonderful Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Father, we thank you because you are a God of peace, love, and justice. We thank you for your love. We thank you because whatsoever we ask in your name, we believe you've answered. Thank you, Father, for victory. Thank you for peace. Thank you because you are rising in a supernatural flight. We are rising to dominate. We are rising to lead. We are rising to victory. Blessed be your name, Father, in the name of Jesus. As we proceed, go with us, Father. In Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. He's worthy to be praised. He alone deserves all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration. This is our first service after prayer conference. First of all, I want to implore us that if you have testimonies, I'm sure testimonies are still flowing in from prayer conference. Please meet the ushers, collect the testimony slips so that you'll share your testimonies because I know the Lord is still doing wonders. And tonight we just want to return all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration back to God. The Bible says in Psalm 118 verse 23, Everything, it is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our sight. It is marvelous in our eyes, and that is why we've come to return all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration back to him. I want us to just go ahead and lift up our hands and just worship him tonight, appreciate him, give him praise. Bless his name, is worthy. Father, for all you've done for us, we are grateful. Father, from the depth of our heart tonight, we've come to say thank you, Lord. Father, we've come to say thank you, Lord Jesus. What a wonderful God you are, Lord Jesus. Lord, you are worthy, Lord, you are worthy, Lord. I am no robo shataya, and I must see no rabba shataya. Father, as an individual, as a family tonight, Lord, we've come to say thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, for everything that you have done for us. My labor, those shataya, and I'm a 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 shataya, and I'm a
Father, for all you have done for us, we are saying we are grateful, oh Lord. Are there grateful people here tonight? For all you have done for us. Yes, Lord. We are saying we, we are grateful, oh Lord. Father, tonight for prayer conference 2020. Father, for open heavens. Father, for the manifestation of your presence. Father, for the release of your word. For revelation, uh, for healing, for deliverances, uh, for miracles, for signs, for wonders, uh, for safe journey, Lord, uh, journey mercies to and fro. We've come tonight to return all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration back to you, Lord Jesus. Uh, with a grateful heart, uh, with an outstretched hand, Lord Jesus. Uh, and that is why we say we are grateful, Lord. Yes, Lord, we are grateful, Lord. Voice reach the heavens. We are grateful, oh Lord, for all you've done. For all you have done for us. Father, we are saying, Lord, we are grateful, oh Lord. Yes, Lord. For you have done so much for us, we cannot tell it all.
we cannot tell it all what the Lord has done for us. Yes, Lord, we cannot tell it all. If we start tonight, what the Lord has done for us. Oh, we cannot tell it all. He saved us and washed us in his. What the Lord has done. What the Lord has done for us.
praise and worship the King of glory. Let's lift our hands, lift our voice and give him praise, give him glory. Lord, we worship you, you are worthy to be praised. Lord, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you adoration. What a mighty God you are. You are beautiful for description, you are marvelous for works. You are wonderful beyond comprehension. We bless your holy name, there is no one like you. Maria Labashi and Alabara Labara 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 we glorify your holy name. What a mighty, mighty, mighty God we serve. There is no one like you. We come into your presence with thanksgiving. We come into your court with praise. Thank you for you are a great God. You are a merciful God. You are a good God. We give you glory, Lord. We worship you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give you glory. Mashaga da baralaba shia da baralaba ya da baralaba. Mashiga da baralaba re anda la ba shiga da ba. Jesus, the Son of God, I believe in. Oh, I believe in you, Jesus, the Son of God, Jesus, the Son of God. I believe in you, I believe in you, I believe in you, I believe in you. Shagada bala la 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 bala. Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus, the Son of God. I believe, I believe in You. Oh, I believe in You. Jesus, the Son of God. Father, this is our declaration tonight that Jesus is the Son of God. And we believe in His power, His power to keep, His power to protect, His power to shield. We believe that He's our fortress, He's our refuge, He's our hiding place, He's our strong tower. Father, thank you. For the gift of your son, Jesus, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all adoration. We ask, O oh Lord, that even as we have come into your house tonight to meet with you, you will meet with each and every one of us in a most unusual way in the name of Jesus. And we vow to return all the glory all the honor and all the adoration to you. 
Thank you, Almighty God. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If you believe that Jesus is going to meet with you tonight, I want you to shout a believing and powerful amen. Please, let's put our hands together for the Lord as we have our seat in the presence of the Lord. God bless you, choir. Hallelujah. One more time for the great success of prayer conference 2020. Please let us put our hands together for the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is always faithful. I want you to say that to yourself. He has shown us his faithfulness and we can only thank him. By the grace of God, the blessings and the testimonies of the conference are started coming in. The very big one and the first one, to my knowledge, was um, the sister that came from Hungary. She was meant to return back yesterday night. And by midday, she started getting calls, not from people from any other place, from her workplace in particular, saying that the border had been closed, that the government had declared that no one should come in or no one can come in into Hungary. And we prayed, hallelujah. We declare that the blessing of God that she has received, this prayer conference should go with her. And I was driving here yesterday night for the prayer meeting with the prayer team. And I heard that word. That is the reason why in the course of anything, make sure God gives you a word. The word that you read is different from the word that you receive. They are not the same. The sent word, the spoken word, is not in the same class with any other category of word. Thank God for the written word. Thank God for the word that you are hearing now. But the potency of the word of God lies in when God sent his word. I heard, lift up your hands, O ye gates, and be lifted up everlasting doors. We are here praying. I was standing there. And I send her a message, what's happening now? She says she's in Amsterdam, getting ready to board the flight to Budapest. And I send as I receive it. As you go, let the gate of Budapest be lifted before you. And she said, amen. According to her, she landed and she just walked in into the city. Because the gate was lifted. Praise the Lord. Believe in the Lord your God, you shall be established. Believe his prophet, you will prosper. This is not the time to choke your spirit with news that do not edify. This is not the time. Now, you tell me, what is anyone going to do knowing about the thousands of people that have been infected by coronavirus? What are you going to do? Are you a journalist? What, what are you going to do? What, no, just let me know. Maybe I'm the one thinking this way. What would anyone do with the information of the so many numbers of people affected? When there are many information with which you will know how not to be affected, you leave that one, you are busy choking yourself with things that will put in you fear. Hallelujah. Now, Towards this evening, around 4 o'clock, one of us here sent a message. The interview that he went for in the midst of prayer conference, I believe you have that testimony already. God has given the job. And then I reply, I say, congratulations. He replied me back. He said, he pays to serve God. That, that was the reply. Because he was one of the volunteers during prayer conference. And as he was volunteering for God, God was volunteering for him. Maybe you are not aware. People go for a million jobs and they do not get one. He came straight from the interview. He's saying to me, during prayer conference, to be of service to the Lord. He could have said, I have interview and all that. I pray that God will give us understanding. Now, I say all that to let you know that it is happening. And yours is on the way. 
So expect it. Be on the lookout for it. Rather than that, allowing all that things to, you know, bother you. You better be on the lookout for your testimony. Praise God forevermore. Somebody say, I'm on the lookout for my testimony. Now, in the midst of what people think is happening, thinking that everywhere is short, today somebody got a job. Say, I'm on the lookout for my testimony. God is always at work. God is at work. So don't preoccupy your mind with what is not. Are we denying what is happening? No. Are we taking necessary steps? Telling our people and even we ourselves taking necessary precautions? Yes. But are we going to now let the enemy to overrun our city? No. Somebody say no. Somebody say no. Somebody say the enemy is not going to overrun this city. And the enemy is not going to overrun any of us. That is the reason why we are gathering. Because the only thing we know to do is what we are doing now. For faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Sir, some people don't have the virus, but they are as good as dead because of fear. Because fear has torments. That's the reason why to gather to encourage ourselves, number one, to join hands together or join our heart together or join our voices together to say, wherever this evil came from, return back. That's why we are gathered. Hallelujah. And tonight the Lord will honor our gathering. In the name of Jesus. I said tonight the Lord will honor our gathering. In the mighty name of Jesus. We started looking at the subject of prayer. And we looked at, or we are looking at the component that makes prayer thick. We are looking at what? You see, when you see a woman preparing a menu, is putting certain ingredients together. When you taste the meal and say this is good, it's because certain things came together to make it good. What are the things that must come together for the efficacy of your prayer? We looked at the name of Jesus. Supernatural flights prayer. By the name of Jesus. That's what we have looked at. And we saw how Jesus, in Luke chapter 4, 38 and 39, Luke chapter 4, 38 and 39, stood in prayer over the fever of Peter's mother-in-law. Hallelujah. So prayer is for checking charge. Prayer is for what? Using the name of Jesus. Prayer is not for begging for things. It's for taking charge. When God said, have dominion, he had prayer in mind. And so tonight, by the grace of God, we will be looking at another ingredient that makes prayer thick. Another ingredient that makes prayer to be very strong. And this is the blood of Jesus. Somebody say the blood of Jesus. Now, by way of introduction, in Romans chapter 1, 16 to 18. Romans chapter 1, 16 to 18. He said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believes. To the Jews first. And also the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. 
I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. It is the power of God. And therein is the righteousness of God revealed. How? From faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all the ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. I don't know if somebody is just reading this or somebody is seeing something here. This verse 18 is speaking to, this, to, to what is happening now. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. But while this is going on, we are not ashamed. Of the gospel of Christ. First Timothy chapter 1, 3 to 5. Sorry, First Peter 1, 3 to 5. The book of First Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 5. It said, Blessed be the God of our Father. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy. Somebody say abundant mercy had begotten us again unto a lively hope. A lively hope. Jesus is the anchor of our hope. Why are we so fully persuaded? Because of Jesus. Because of his blood. Because of his name. He has begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus Christ from the dead. So this scripture is saying no matter what is happening around you, as long as you can remember that Jesus rose from that grave, you can bow your head in hopelessness. No. Hopelessness, uncertainty, fear, and terror is not for those for whom Jesus died. Is somebody hearing something this evening? Verse 4 says, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that faded not away. Somebody say, I have an inheritance in God. Reserved in heaven for you. Verse 5 is where I am going. Please read this scripture together. I want to go. Who are kept by the power of God through faith. For salvation, ready to be revealed. When? Somebody say, I'm kept. By the power of God. True faith. For salvation. Ready to be revealed. In the last time. How many knows that we are living in the last time? How many know we are living in the last day? Bible says there is the power of God that is reserved. True faith. True faith. True faith. True faith. Romans chapter 1 that we read, verse 16, say, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. How do we assess that power? It is true faith. We are kept by the power of God. As you go out on your daily business, I am kept by the power of God. I am kept by the power. That's First Peter chapter 1, verse 5. I am kept. My family is kept. Everyone named by my name is kept by the power of God. How? True faith unto salvation. The word salvation there is the same as deliverance. True faith unto deliverance. The word salvation there is the same as rescue. True faith unto rescue. The word salvation there is the same as exemption. True faith unto ex exemption. What this is saying is as many that will stand on faith will be exempted. They will be rescued. They will be delivered. They will be salvaged. They will be preserved. Ready to be revealed. If this is the only scripture you came to hear this evening, it's worth it. Ready to be revealed. Something is about to be revealed. 
concerning those who are kept by the power of God through their faith for rescue, for exemption, for deliverance. These are the things that should be going on on your mind. These are the things you should be meditated, meditating on. Irrespective of what is happening around me, I am kept by the power of God. I'm kept. I'm kept. Let the faith for salvation, the faith for the deliverance, the faith for the rescue, the faith for the preservation that is available in Christ Jesus to rule your mind. Hallelujah. I pray somebody is coming back with his testimony. I pray somebody is coming back with a testimony. In the mighty name of Jesus. So from those two scriptures that we have read, the power of God that brings victory is released. Number one, the power of God that brings victory is released, number one, when we are not ashamed to declare the word of God. The power of God that brings salvation or brings victory is released, number one, when we are not ashamed to declare the word of God, even when it seems not to make sense, both to yourself and to others. There's something about the word of God when you declare it, even when it doesn't make sense. Say it another way. The word of God works faster when it is declared, when it does not make sense to do so. That was the secret of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That was the secret of Daniel. Hallelujah. So the power of God's word brings victory. That brings victory is released. Number one, when we are not ashamed to declare the word of God, even when it seems not to make sense, both to yourself. The reason why that needs to be there is if you are waiting for it to make sense to you, you won't declare it. And not only yourself, but also to others. People are wondering, for example, does it make sense with what is happening? For someone to be standing and be saying there is power in the blood of Jesus that can exempt us from this. It doesn't make sense to others. And for those that will not remind themselves, even to you, it seems like it doesn't make sense. Hallelujah. Deadly virus is ravaging and people are taking cover. You are talking about the blood of Jesus. But that is what makes the power of God to be revealed. I am not ashamed of the gospel. The gospel of Christ, among others, talks about the blood of Jesus. And so what we are doing is, since the gospel of Christ mentioned the blood of Jesus, at this crucial time, we are not ashamed to stand by it. Is somebody getting something this evening? We are not ashamed. Let God defend himself. Let God defend himself. Hallelujah. And he will defend himself. I said God will defend himself in your family. He will defend himself in your life. He will defend himself in all that concerns you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Number two. When we are not ashamed to declare our faith in God openly. And stand by it. The power of God that brings victory is released. When we are not ashamed, number two, when we are not ashamed to declare our faith in God openly and stand by it. That is number two. So this is the time for us. Not to be ashamed to declare our faith. What is faith? It's a way of life. It's a way of belief. Everyone is entitled to what they believe. And you are also entitled to what you believe. When you are not ashamed to declare your faith 
in God openly in this season, in this time that is challenging, and stand by it. Hallelujah. You enter into a place, you, 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 you plead the blood of Jesus. Let me be a bit ahead of myself. You enter into a place before you touch anything, you use the name of Jesus. And you are not muttering it to yourself. And we are not saying it should be a public nuisance. But I don't think anybody will arrest me if I say, before I pick this one, I say, in the name of Jesus. Before I pick this, blood, this phone, I say, by the blood of Jesus. You can all hear me, but I don't think anybody will arrest me. I am not ashamed. There is something that triggers the power of God when you are not ashamed to declare him. When you are not ashamed to express your faith in him. Those are the two things we have said. Hallelujah. This is what I have said thus far. It is carelessness for a child of God to pick anything, anyhow, anywhere without using the name of Jesus, without using the blood of Jesus. Then why do you know him? It is carelessness. You want to hear something else? Now, you go to shop, there are no sanitizers. Everything is running out, but there is something that cannot run out. Are you hearing it now? That name cannot run out. That blood cannot run out. You better get used to it now. That's what I'm talking about. The blood of Jesus can't run out. The name of Jesus can't run out. So in case you do not have, because it's run out or running out, sanitizers to use before you touch anything, what are you doing with the name of Jesus? Is someone glad I came tonight? What are you doing with the blood of Jesus? Are you telling me that the sanitizer is more powerful than the blood of Jesus? We are not hanging around God. We believe in him. And we are going to stand by what we believe. Before you step into the place, use the name. Use the blood. Hallelujah. You are returning with your testimony. I said you are returning with your testimony. In the mighty name of Jesus. See what Acts chapter 17 verse 28 says. The book of Acts chapter 17 verse 28. Church, let's read it together talking about Jesus. For in him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. In him we live. In him we move. If you need to move, move. Move in him. Move. What the enemy is after is to cripple everyone in fear. No. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the blood of Jesus. Take necessary precautions. But don't live under fear. Because fear has torment. Anyone named by the name of this house that is under the grip of fear, we set them free in the mighty name of Jesus. Someone say, in the name of Jesus, we live. In the name of Jesus, we move. In the name of Jesus, we have our being. When there was not what is happening, if you go to the shops, you will see the pile of, of sanitizer. Nobody's touching it. You will see piles of toilet roll. Nobody's packing it. Hallelujah. 
But there is a name we have been used to. This is the time not to forget that name. There is the blood that we have spoken about or heard about. This is the time to activate it. Someone say activation. Yeah. When you buy your phone, they will say you need to activate. You buy a SIM, they say you need to activate. That blood is potent. Somebody say it is potent. It is potent. A SIM card that is lying in the pouch where they usually put it. How many can see the picture of what I'm saying? Is as potent as when you activate it and put it in your phone. It's potent. The meaning of that is you will only see what that blood can do when you intentionally, expectantly, resolvingly begin to use it. Somebody say, I resolve in this season, in this challenging time, to use the name of Jesus, to use the blood of Jesus intentionally. Don't just use it casually, use it intentionally. When the Lord spoke to my ears and I heard that scripture, lift up your ears, O ye gates. I used it intentionally by sending it into the phone of that lady. Hallelujah. Now, before I forget, if there's anyone listening to me that have not been careful enough to get at least a word for this season, you are wrong. You must have a word that you are living with, that you are moving with, and that you are what? Why did you change it? Return it back to that scripture. In him we move. In him we live. In him we have our being. What is the guarantee that this virus can't touch you? Have a word. A word. Let that word be surer to you. Now, the funnest thing is that what we are afraid of, nobody has seen it before. Has anybody seen this? <laughs> Who can describe the color of this virus? There's somebody here now. I'm just moving by the spirit. What I have to teach here, I don't think two hours can teach it. Who can describe the size of this virus? People are not even aware of what they are afraid of. The only thing is that it has a name. And you have a name to whom every knee bow. The name that brought the dead. Back to life. A woman engaged that name over her husband that was dead for seven days. Seven days. Day one, nothing happened. Day two, nothing happened. Day three, nothing happened. By the seventh day, she told her sister, go and get me perfume. She's, she insisted. Sir, you better use what has worked. To chase back to hell what is at war. You better do what? Use what has worked to chase back to hell. Now, if someone shows up now and says we should use alcohol to wash our hand, and I'm talking about beer, because somebody has said the people will start using it, that is where we are now. What I'm saying is, who told you that using the things that are prescribed, actually, we make it not, we make somebody not to have an, an issue with what is happening? But we know what has worked that will always work. Praise God forevermore. Our test revelation from chapter 13. If you hear our test, it means we are just starting. Is that not? Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. What you've heard so far is introduction. Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. And all who dwell on earth will worship him. Whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb. Slain when? From the foundation. 
of the world. Now, leave that translation, but let me read two translations here. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beasts. We worship the what? Why? All whose names have not been written in the last book of life. Did you hear something now? Those that will worship the beasts, they are those whose names have not been written in the Lamb's book of life. Who is the Lamb book? To, uh, who, is, who, who is this Lamb? He said, the Lamb who was slain from the creation of the world. If I read only that translation, it's enough. So quickly we look at facts about the blood of Jesus. Or facts about the blood. Let's generalize it. Facts about the blood. Number one, before we arrive this world, that's from this scripture, God has made a provision for us, his children, for such a time as this, through the everlasting blood of his son, Jesus. The Bible said the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Before we arrive this world, God has made a provision for us, his children, for such a time as this, through the everlasting blood of his son, Jesus. Number two fact about the blood is that the blood of Jesus is God's covenant system. The blood of Jesus is God's covenant system. Exclusive for those who are named by his name. Everything I'm saying is in this scripture. It is God's program. It talks about those whose names are not found in that book. And then it talks about the lamb that was slain. So there is a program for you. There is a system for you whose name is in the book of life or who name the name of the Lord. Somebody said there's a program for me in God's covenant system. Because I'm named by his name. So the blood of Jesus, I said number two, is God's covenant system that is exclusive for those who are named by his name. Number three. Number three. In the first mention of the word blood in the Bible. We're talking about facts about the blood. In the first mention of the word blood in the Bible, God said that the blood has a voice that cries. In the first mention of the word blood in the Bible, God said that the blood has a voice that cries. Which means if you do a search in any Bible, the word blood will come out first in Genesis chapter 4, verse 10. And there's something that is called the law of first mention. And what did God say about the blood in Genesis chapter 4, verse 10? He said, the voice of your brother's blood cries. This is talking about Cain and Abel. So the blood has a voice. Hallelujah. Now, in the New Testament... This scripture was repeated in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. The blood has a voice. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. Let's read it together, church. We want to go to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. The word covenant is the same as testament, which means what we read in Genesis chapter 4, has to do with the Old Testament. What we are reading now, and that has to do with the blood of Abel. Now, what we are reading now has to do with the blood of Jesus, and it is the blood of the new covenant, the new testament. 
Keep going. And to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Hallelujah. What is the meaning of what we have just read, number four? The scripture that we just read confirms that, the all, that not only does the blood speak. Number three, we said that the first mention of the word blood was about the blood that has the voice that cries. But number four, the scripture confirms that not only does the blood speak, the blood of Jesus also speaks. And the only thing it speaks are better things. That's where we are going. And that blood is what we are face to face with here tonight. Somebody say the blood of Jesus speaks. And the blood of Jesus speaks only better things. Say it again now that you know it, the blood of Jesus speaks. And the only thing that the blood speaks are better things. Now, the meaning of this is five things in a row, number one, or you call it A. What is the meaning of point number four? So it can be 4A. Where there is death, the blood of Jesus will speak life. If you understand that, say amen. Where there is death, for a the blood of Jesus will speak life. For B, where there is judgment, the blood of Jesus will speak mercy. If you agree with it, say amen. C, where there is defeat, the blood of Jesus will we speak victory. Where there is defeat, the blood of Jesus, we speak victory. 4D, where there is punishment, the blood of Jesus, we speak pardon of freedom. Hallelujah. And number five of E, where there is trouble, the blood of Jesus will speak peace. That is why we are here tonight. Because we believe that the blood of Jesus, according to the word of God, speaks. And we know what that blood speaks. That blood only speaks better things. And what are the better things that the blood will speak in our lives tonight? Where there is death. Somebody say, where there is death? The blood of Jesus will speak life in my favor. The second thing, where there is judgment. Say it together, where there is judgment? In my favor. The blood of Jesus will speak mercy. Where there is defeat. The blood of Jesus, in my favor, will speak victory. Where there is punishment, the blood of Jesus, will speak freedom. Where there is trouble, the blood of Jesus, will speak peace. Hallelujah. Father, we ask that the blood of your son will speak over our lives. We speak over our family. We speak over this land. We speak over this nation. Let that blood speak life. Let it speak mercy. Let it speak victory. Let it speak freedom. Let it speak peace over us, over this church, over our nation, over our land, over our city, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's quickly look at some scriptures on the blood and the meaning or implications. A few scriptures on the blood and the meaning or implications. 
In Genesis chapter 8, 18 to 20. For time, we won't be able to read this. But the summary of what happened here, and you can write it for yourself as I read, number one, is that when Noah spilled the blood of clean animals, after the blood, God said, there will no longer be cause again on the earth. Genesis chapter 8, 18 to 22. After the flood that wiped the whole earth, the Bible says as soon as Noah came out from the ark, he, he took clean animals, clean beasts, and he raised an offering unto the Lord. Thank you for that. Just He took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offering, which means he shed their blood. And what happened? The Lord smelled the aroma, and the Lord said. Are you seeing how the blood causes God to speak? Are you seeing how God provokes the voice of God? Hallelujah. But we have a parallel of this scripture in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. Sorry, 1 Peter chapter 1, 18 and 19. 1 Peter chapter 1. Because what Noah did was to take clean animals, as we saw, clean beasts, clean fowls. And First Peter chapter 1, verse 18 says, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by traditions from your fathers, verse 19, but with the precious blood of Jesus as a lamb without blemish and without spots. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm redeemed with the blood of Jesus. A lamb without blemish and without spots. Now, I hope you are not hearing this, you are seeing this. Noah in Genesis chapter 8 took clean animals, offered it to the Lord. God spoke, and we no longer destroy the earth. Now Jesus came on your behalf, a lamb without blemish, a lamb without spots. What do you think that blood is speaking? Did you get the reason why we read those two scriptures now? So that when we begin to plead that blood, you know what you are saying. Because by the, by the, by the precious blood of Jesus, a lamb without blemish, a lamb without spot. You are not permitted to be a victim of evil. Hallelujah. So the point in number one is the blood of Jesus is clean and strong enough to move God to act and show us mercy when we plead that blood. If the blood of clean animals made God to move, made God to act in the favor of Noah and those generations, the blood of Jesus is strong enough to make God move in this challenging time and show us mercy as we plead that blood. If you understand what I've just said, say hallelujah. The blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. I think we should move to action now because of time. Father, we give you praise. Let's rise up on our feet and go ahead and thank God for the gift of the Passover lamb, which is Jesus, for our sake. Let's give him glory. Let's give him honor. Let's give him adoration. Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you for the precious blood of Christ. 
as of a lamb without blemish, as of a lamb without spot, as of a lamb without wrinkle. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the provision of the precious blood of Jesus. Let's go ahead and give him thanks. 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 We give you praise. We give you glory, Lord. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Blessed be your holy name. Mashaga da baralaba, shiga da baralaba. Zege de borianda baralaba. Jege de gelege de gede 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 ya. Mashaga da baralaba rianda. Jege de lege zigalaba, shiga daba. Lord, we worship you. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood without blemish. The blood without spot. The blood without sin. The sinless blood. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22 says, Ye are come to Mount Zion. Where are we now? And to the city of the living God. Where are we now? And to the heavenly Jerusalem. Where are we now? And to an innumerable company of angels. Where are we now? The next verse says, And to the general assembly. In case everything I've been saying since you do not agree. And to the church of the firstborn. The firstborn is Jesus Christ. Is this the church of Jesus? Is this the church of Jesus Christ? Who are registered in heaven. What we are doing now is being registered in heaven. To the God, the judge of all. How many knows that God is about to judge this evil virus? And to the spirits of the just men made perfect. That's talking about the spirit that fought for Moses and the Israelites in Egypt. Those are the things that I skipped that I could not read. The spirit that fought for Noah. That made him not to sink with others when they were going down as lead. The spirit of the just man made perfect, talking about all the people you can read about in Hebrews chapter 11. Hallelujah. Verse 24. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling. So in the word of God, there is something called the blood of sprinkling. It's different from the blood of drinking. What about the blood of sprinkling? That is the blood that we plead. So when we say we plead the blood of Jesus, don't just say it, see it. See it as though you are spraying your perfume. See it as though you are spraying your insecticide. Now, if pesticide, viruside, insecticide can kill this evil, deadly virus, when we spread the blood of Jesus, it will kill it faster. It will seal it quicker. It will send it to hell in a hurry. And that is what we are about to do. Somebody say, we are about, we are about to plead the blood of Jesus. As a spiritual insecticide. As a spiritual pesticide. As a spiritual viruside. To kill and destroy to terminate and evaporate, to disintegrate this evil virus from our land, from our city, from our nation, from our lives, from our neighborhood, from our communities. In the name of Jesus, how many are ready to use that blood? Say, Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over our nation. Over our land, over our city, over our church, Jesus' house story, over our lives, over our families, against this deadly disease called coronavirus. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and begin to plead the blood. Go ahead and begin to plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. Father, we plead the blood. 
of Jesus Christ against this evil deadly virus called Corona. We plead this blood of Jesus over our nation. We plead it over our land. We plead it over our city. We plead it over our church, Jesus has story. We plead it over our lives. We plead it over our family. We plead the blood of Jesus. 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 Maria na barala bashiga na barala baraba. Maria da bara koposha delega. We plead the blood of Jesus. Laga da barala bashiga na barala ba. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Some of us need to get to speed with this prayer. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 13. See what it says. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 13. Can we read it together, church? For if the blood of bulls and goats sprinkled the unclean, sanctifies the purifying of the flesh, go on. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spoil to God, cleanse your conscience? It will cleanse you so that you remain alive to serve the living God. How much more will the blood of Jesus cleanse your family so that you remain alive to serve the living God? How much more will that blood cleanse this land so that this nation remain alive to serve the living God? Somebody say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus to cleanse our nation, to cleanse our city, to cleanse our land, to cleanse our church. Jesus has story. To cleanse our families, to cleanse our lives. From this evil, deadly virus, we plead the blood of Jesus. Let it cleanse, let it purge. Let it cleanse, let it purge. Let it cleanse, let it purge. We plead the blood of Jesus. Standing on the word of the Lord, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, Offered himself without spot of God. Cleanse your life. Cleanse your land. Cleanse your church. Cleanse your home. Cleanse your neighborhood. Go ahead and cleanse everywhere that relates to you. Where you go on a daily basis, this is your opportunity to cleanse it from here. I plead the blood of Jesus over my workplace. I plead the blood of Jesus. Over my neighborhood, where I live, I plead the blood of Jesus. Over the four wall of my abode, where I sleep, where I wake up, I plead the blood of Jesus over my wife. I plead the blood of Jesus over my children. I plead the blood of Jesus over their schools, where they play. I plead the blood of Jesus over everything that we eat, everything that we drink, everywhere we go, everything that we touch. Jagada bara la bashi gada bara, zegele boshi gada bara 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 bara, mashagada bara la bashi gada bara. Thank you, King of Kings. We plead the blood. We worship you, Lord. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. 
Some of us, we've lived in, we, 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 we most predominantly came from a tropical zone where they say, there's mosquito in this room. You don't go to mosquito and begin to negotiate. You go to the nearest store and buy shelters. How many remember it? And then you come, you don't speak, you just pray. What we are doing now is we are spraying the blood of Jesus. And before your very eyes, you will see the mosquitoes fall down dead. It is not enough to pray, you must see. We are spraying the blood of Jesus. How many can see coronavirus fall down dead? In United Kingdom, in Scotland, in Aberdeen, all over the city. As we plead the blood of Jesus, we see it dead. We see it dead. We see it dead. In the name of Jesus. Say, Father, I plead the blood of Jesus. As I plead the blood of Jesus, I see this deadly disease called coronavirus dead in our nation, United Kingdom, dead in our land, Scotland, dead in our city, Aberdeen, dead in our homes. Dead in our families, dead in our church, we plead the blood of Jesus. Go ahead, go ahead and plead the blood. Go ahead and plead the blood. As we plead this blood, we see this evil demon dead, dead, dead. Shagadaba Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Something is happening here. John chapter 3, verse 14. The book of John chapter 3, verse 14. Church, we are reading it to 16. Can we read it together? I want to go. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so, must the Son of Man, talking about Jesus, be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him should know what? Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe he was lifted up? You believe he went on that Calvary tree? You believe that he shed his blood? The word of God says to me to say to you, whoever believes in him should know what? Should not perish of coronavirus should not perish of this evil disease. Wherever the land where the people believe in it should not be ravaged by this evil disease. But have what? But have everlasting life. Let's read the next phrase together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Has he given us his only begotten son? What happened? That whoever believes in him should not perish but have should not perish, but have what? So as we, be, as we plead the blood of Jesus, would, what are we releasing over Aberdeen? I love it when people are in the Spirit. Whosoever believes in what the blood of Jesus can do, will not perish. Aberdeen will not perish. Scotland will not perish. United Kingdom will not perish. Europe will not perish. No member of this house will be a victim of this evil virus. But have everlasting life. So as we plead the blood of Jesus now, what are we pleading over our land? What are we pleading over our city? What are we pleading over our nation? What are we pleading on ourselves? What are we pleading on our family? Go ahead and begin to plead the blood of Jesus. Everlasting life. The life that cannot be killed. The life that cannot be harmed. The life that cannot be destroyed. The life that cannot be cut short. 
That is what is available in the blood. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. Go ahead, go ahead and push it. Fathers, we plead the blood of Jesus. We release everlasting life that is out of prayer. As we plead the blood of Jesus over our city, over our nation, over our land, we release everlasting life. We release everlasting life. We release everlasting life. To the north of Abadin, to the south of Abadin, to the west of Abadin, to the east of Abadin, we release everlasting life. People of God, push this prayer. We release everlasting life. Varuza Galabashi Gadaba. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Stretch your hands to this table and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask for the transfer of the everlasting life that the blood of Jesus carries into this table. Now, in the name of Jesus, go ahead and begin to make that declaration. We declare the release of the everlasting life that the blood of Jesus carries into this table. You are not praying. 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 Let there be the release of the everlasting life that the blood of Jesus carry. Thank you, Almighty God. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Take your writing material if you are writing. And let me quickly give us seven things that is in the blood before we partake of it. Hallelujah. If you sit down, I will take longer. But you can sit down. What is in the blood? Number one, a life-giving mystery. A life-giving what? I give us two scriptures, Genesis 9-4, Leviticus 17, 11. Genesis chapter 9, verse 4, Leviticus 17, 11. What is in the blood? Number one, a life-giving mystery. Number two, what is in the blood? Power to stop the destroyer. Power to stop the destroyer. That is what you are coming in contact with tonight. Exodus chapter 12, verse 23. Power to stop the destroyer. These are the things you take home, you meditate on. Number three, what is in the blood? Covenant over God's people for escape and rescue from judgments. Covenant over what? God's people for escape and rescue from judgment. Exodus chapter 24. Exodus chapter 24, verses 3 and 8. And then Zechariah chapter 9, 9 to 11. Am I too fast? Covenant over God's people for escape and rescue from judgment. Exodus 24, verse 3 and 8. Zechariah chapter 9, 9 to 11. Number 4, what is in the blood? The release and multiplication of grace and peace. What is in the blood? The release and the multiplication of grace and peace. You find that in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 2. Hallelujah. What is in the blood? What is in the blood? Number five, I believe. Power to be a witness of God on the earth. What is in the blood? Power to be a witness of God on the earth. First John chapter 5, 7 to 8. There are three that bear witness in earth. 
the spirit, the word, and the blood. A witness is somebody that witnesses it. You are about to witness something in this service. Power to be a witness for God on the earth. If there is anything for the fact that you came to partake of this blood, God will make you the witness that his blood works. That's what that blood is. That's what that point is saying. For the fact that you are there is the reason for what God wants to do at this table tonight. Somebody say, I'm God's witness of the power of his blood on the earth. Number six, what's in the blood? So that's First John chapter 5, 7 to 8. Redemption to God from all things. Redemption to God. The word redemption means buy back. So buy back to God from all things. And all things means coronavirus. There's a buying back. Now, you don't understand what this means. If there's any sickness in anybody's body, this table will swallow it up. Redemption. 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 The word redemption is the same thing as to purchase. It's the same thing as to rescue. It's the same thing as to secure, to regain. Somebody get ready. You are going to regain your health from this table in the name of Jesus. I see the word redemption as to inoculate, to shield, to protect, to preserve. Because you are his witness on the earth. So redemption to God from all things, including sickness. And that's Revelation chapter 9. Sorry, chapter 5, verse 9. Revelation chapter what? Five, verse nine. Finally, number seven, the enforcement of victory and the mandate to overcome. What is in the blood? The enforcement of victory and the mandate. Somebody say the enforcement of victory and the mandate to overcome. As I partake of this table tonight, God is enforcing on my behalf victory and the mandate to overcome. Scripture, Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Look at this scripture and let us... Is that Revelation chapter 12, verse 11? I know it, is, it wasn't. Read this scripture together. I want to go, people of God. And they overcame him. How? By the blood of the Lamb, the enforcement to have victory. The enforcement to have victory and the mandate to overcome. As you partake of this table, God, we enforce victory. We enforce the mandate to overcome over your life, over your family over everyone that is precious to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What scripture are we standing on among those seven points as we partake of this table? John chapter 6 verse 54. You see, if you check the number of scriptures, even though I skip certain things I could not say for time, it's enough to choke the devil to hell. That's why we are loading everywhere. John 6, 54 with scriptures. Please, let's be on our feet. John chapter 6, verse 54. I know that is John chapter 6, 54. Is there no John chapter 6, verse 54? People of God, are you going to read this scripture together? Whoever eats my flesh and drink my blood, has what? Has what? Has what? What is in this table? What do you see on this tray? What will the ministers be bringing to serve you? Don't see waver. Don't see drink. In fact, for the purpose of tonight, don't see just the flesh and the blood of Jesus. What is 
put on this table is the name, the correct name is eternal life. What is the meaning of eternal life? The life that cannot be killed. The life that cannot be humiliated. The life that virus cannot virus. The life that is indestructible. The life that cannot be trashed. That is what you are about to be snacked, to be served. Do you believe? Somebody say, I believe. In the power of the flesh and the blood of Jesus. I believe that this table tonight carries for me eternal life. Attention. Partake of it. Let there be a transfusion of the eternal life that is in Christ into my system. Now, in the name of Jesus, go ahead and begin to pray. Go ahead and begin to pray. Go ahead and begin to pray. Please, everyone should take one. One, please. Everyone should take one, please. Everyone, you take one, including the children. Everyone, you take one, including the children. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. As you take your own item, pray on it. Let this cup, let this flesh, let this blood communicate to me eternal life. Let it communicate to me eternal life. Let it communicate to me eternal life. Let it communicate, communicate into my system eternal life. Pray and call upon the name of the Lord. If you have been served, please open the lid at the top. Thank God for the flesh of Jesus and break it in thanksgiving and partake of it while we take the blood together. Speak to the Lord before you take it. Lord, if there's any sin in my life, please listen to this very important before you take it. If there's any sin in my life that will not make this flesh and this blood to work for me, Father, I repent. I ask that you have mercy on me. If there's anything in my life that will not make this cup to communicate the eternal life that it carries into my life, my Father, my God, I ask for your mercy. And then when you have done that, you partake of the flesh. Have mercy on me, Lord. Whosoever eats my flesh and drink my blood, has eternal life and I will raise him on the last day. It means he will live a life that is beyond this evil virus. I will raise him on the last day. He won't die before his time. Please let's open the lid. Let's open the lid of our cup. I want to believe that the online Worshippers are doing the same. Let's open the lid of our cup and lift it up unto the Lord. There is power, power, wonder walking power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power. Wonder walking power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Please let everyone stand up, please. And this is not the pastor just wanting you to stand up. The Bible says that when they first took this blood, the Bible said they should eat it with their loins guarded. That is the prescription of the scripture that we read it eat it. Someone that is eager for something to happen. Father, it is in your name that we lift up this cup in our hands and we declare this is the blood of Jesus for our victory, for our peace, 
for our preservation, Amen. for our protection, Amen. for the transfer and the transfusion of eternal life Amen. against every evil, deadly disease, Amen. against sickness and infirmity, Amen. against every affliction. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Father, as we have read in your word that the blood of Jesus speak, as we partake of this blood, let it speak against sickness and disease in our land in the name of Jesus. Let it speak against sickness and disease in our body in the name of Jesus. If there's anyone with any symptom that is of sickness, let this blood swallow it up in the name of Jesus. As the rod of Moses swallowed the rod of the magicians of Pharaoh. Lord, let this blood swallow everything and anything contrary to us in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, we partake of this mystery blood. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit. Go ahead and take it. Go ahead and take it and begin to make this declaration as I say those seven things by the blood of Jesus are partaking of the life giving mystery in the name of Jesus by the blood of Jesus are partaking of the power to stop the destroyer in the name of Jesus by the blood of Jesus are partaking of the covenant that is for me for escape and rescue from every judgment ravaging the world in the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, I am partaking of the release and the multiplication of grace and peace into my life and family in the mighty name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, I have been, I have been empowered to be a witness of God upon the earth in the name of Jesus. Whatever cannot harm Jesus, cannot harm me in the name of Jesus by the blood of Jesus I have been a partaker of the redemption of God from all evil things in the name of Jesus by the blood of Jesus there is an enforcement of victory and the mandate to overcome in the name of Jesus in my life, go ahead and begin to declare by this blood there is the enforcement of victory and the mandate to overcome. To overcome every challenge of sickness, disease, affliction, oppression, enchantment and divination. Onslaught from the pit of hell. Father, we give you praise and glory. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Father, we believe that you have touched our lives. And we are fully persuaded that you have put a seal of exemption upon us. And you have fed us to inoculate us from every evil that is ravaging the world. We go in this confidence that we are untouchable. That we are too defended. That we cannot be molested. This same blood, we, we plead it into the four corners of our homes and our place of abode. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, almighty God. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If you believe in what you have received this evening, please put your hands together for the Lord as you have your seats. Hallelujah. Please, while we listen to... Do we have that video ready? While we listen to this video, important announcement, please let's package an offering, and then the ushers, no, we just move the basket. Um, let's have two baskets go around. Let's give a few minutes for the people to package their offering. If you need an envelope, just do like this in case there's no envelope behind the seat in front of you. 
and the usher will serve you with the envelope while we listen to this short video. Please go ahead. Attention, this is an urgent information. Dear members of Jesus House Story, the message you are about to hear relates to the prevention of further spread of coronavirus. It is signed and approved by Pastor Dapo Alanwaju. In view of the current heightened awareness and public concerns about the spread of coronavirus also known as COVID-19, as well as the ongoing seasonal flu virus and common cold, we want to assure that your health and safety concerns are our highest priorities. Please, note the public health guidelines to prevent and slow the spread of COVID-19, which include Wash your hands with soap and water often for at least 20 seconds. Always wash your hands when you get home or into work and before eating. Use hand sanitizer or gel if soap and water are not available. Cover your mouth and nose with a tissue. So why we, you know, get that clearer before we meet again on Sunday? The replica of this information is on the notice board. And the summary of what he's saying is that we should please take necessary pre precautions, as we can see, wash our hands, use um, all the sanitizers, and also eat healthy, have good sleep. All this will help our immune. And also, if in the event of any suspicion of anything which by the blood of Jesus cannot happen, let us also stay away and watch from online. So these are all information that will help us and We'll, we believe that the Lord King of Glory that we have called upon today will continue to keep us in the name of Jesus. Um, if there is need for us not to meet in the church, we will communicate it to us via our different groups. But we believe that we'll continue to meet because nothing can substitute for our coming together to pray and all that. Hallelujah. We have provision of um, sanitizers and um, in the washroom. As you are aware, we have, you know, soaps and all that. Please, let's make sure we wash our hands regularly as we've been advised and do the needful. And the Lord King of glory will continue to bless us in Jesus' name. Have we? Let's collect the offering, please. If we have not. If you still have your offering with you, just raise it up so they can come to where you are. Also, this is an opportunity to appreciate every one of us for all we have done to, you know, give the Lord a glorious conference and I know that the Lord King of Glory will bless you and your testimony will come speedily. Mother's Day by the grace of God is next week Sunday and the theme is soaring on equal swings. I want you to shout hallelujah. So this next Sunday is Mother's Day. Let's lift up our mothers into the hands of God in prayers and believe God that they will you know, celebrate many more years even as they soar on the eagle's swings in Jesus' name. So please let's invite our friends and family to this great celebration. Hallelujah. We are also reminded of the Aberdeen Easter Festival 2020 that is happening 12th of April 2020. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord give you peace by all means in the name of Jesus. Let's rise on our feet as we pray over the offering together. And then we bring the service to a close. Father, we thank you because you are the one that gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Thank you because our hands are not empty. Thank you because you are providing for us. You are provided for us. Lord, we pray over everyone that you are blessed and have been able to give tonight that their hands will never know dryness in the name of Jesus. And for anyone that is unable to give whose heart you want to give, I pray that you will bless them in the name of Jesus. We pray that you sanctify this offering. Let it be used for the furtherance of your work in the name of Jesus. And let it return to us in good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over in the name of Jesus. Thank you, almighty God. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Together, let's share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, God's goodness and mercy is following us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Help me look for seven people and prophesy to them I'm too defended to be defeated. 
I'm too defended to be defeated. This message has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout the United Kingdom and the world. If you would like to support us, kindly visit our website on www.jesushousetory.org. God bless you.